In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Keep us in your grace. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not but later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. By what authority are you doing these things? They demand of Jesus. In other words, they ask, who do you think you are? And of course, it's not the only question they could have asked this stranger, newly arrived in Jerusalem. They might have said, what is your name? Where have you come from? What brings you here? Or perhaps tell us something about your story, about who you are and what is important to you. But instead of curiosity, the Jerusalem leaders confront Jesus with these questions about his authority that just drip with accusation. As we think about this confrontation, Let's recall for a moment what comes just before. Because when they confront Jesus, the chief priests and the elders are referring to some very specific things. It's Jesus' second day in Jerusalem, his traveling ministry throughout the towns and the countryside of Galilee comes to a close as he and the disciples arrive in the city and the gospel narrative shifts from the periphery into the center of power. 
Right away, the stage is set for a confrontation and for conflict between Jesus and the representatives of state and religious power. Just the day before, Jesus entered the city in a strange, triumphal procession, seated on the back of a donkey and surrounded by crowds shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. He goes directly to the temple grounds and there overturns the tables of all who were buying and selling, shouting to them, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers, with the word, calling to them with the words from the prophets. He immediately begins to heal people gathered in the temple grounds, the crowd still calling Hosanna all around him. He and the disciples, after a busy first day, leave the city for the night, and in the morning Jesus returns to the temple grounds and begins to teach. And immediately, the chief priests and the elders confront him, demanding to know by what authority he does these things. These things. All these things that upset the order of business as usual in the temple, and by extension challenge the authority and power of those who sanction and benefit from the way of things. By what authority are you doing these things, they ask. Who do you think you are? It's a familiar question, one that comes in various and pernicious forms and is asked over and over again to those who dare to stand against the many ways of empire. It's a question that emerges from the logic of hierarchy, where power is concentrated at the top and doled out according to the will of those who hold it. Those who challenge the structures of power, who question the status quo, or who simply try to live lives of dignity in the face of oppression are faced with any number of iterations of who do you think you are? We hear this question in, in those marching in the streets and calling for the dignity of all black lives. We hear it in the stories of Trayvon Martin, George Floyd, Jacob Blake, Breonna Taylor, and the names of too many other black bodies killed and maimed by the powers of systemic racism in action. We hear this question in the struggles of our friends, our immigrant neighbors in the city and across the country whose presence is not recognized by our government and who therefore have not received financial support for job losses in this pandemic and who still struggle to meet their families' basic needs. In these and many other struggles for justice, we hear this question from places of power, who do you think you are? But notice that Jesus never answers their question, not directly. When I first read the text, I wondered why in this moment he doesn't just claim his identity as the anointed one, God's child, one who teaches and heals and acts in the world with divine authority it might have been simple enough to say. But perhaps by not giving them the kind of answer they are looking for, he denies the question, and he denies the premise of the question itself. For the power and the authority that Jesus bears is of a fundamentally different nature, a fundamentally different order than the authority, the powers that the chief priests are asking about. Whereas the Jerusalem leaders understand power conferred and power over, Jesus locates himself among and alongside those whom the powers of the day discount, demean, and ignore. Rather than the authority of power over, Jesus' authority is one of love and of radical solidarity. We hear an echo of this in Paul's writing to the Philippians, that Jesus, though he was not in the form of God, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness. For the kingdom of God will not be marked by a simple replacement of one set of authoritarian powers for another. Rather, the inbreaking of the kingdom 
is an unfolding transformation of the fundamental order of all things. An order in which, as we hear over and over in Matthew's Gospel, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. An order in which God's ways of righteousness, right relationship, and justice for all will be the norm for our interactions with each other and with all of God's creation. An order in which these questions, by what authority do you act? Who do you think you are? Are questions that cease to have any meaning as the ways of empire are subverted and reshaped into the ways of the kingdom, into the ways of the commonwealth of God. Friends, as people of faith, as the body of Christ in this time, we are called to orient ourselves and our lives around this coming into being of the commonwealth of God. As we live amidst the many ways of empire that continue to unfold all around us, I know it can feel overwhelming. I don't know about you, but there are days when I wake up already tired, worn down by the barrage of stories and messages of suffering and pain and fear and death that seem too big to ever begin to unravel or transform. Where do we find the energy, the strength, and the courage to embrace the ways of God's justice? As the cacophony of voices all around us seem to continue to shout, who do you think you are? That energy, that strength, and that courage are all fruits of faith. Faith which grows in us not by our own efforts, but as a gracious and ever-flowing gift from God. In faith, Luther writes, our hearts cling to God, which means nothing less than entrusting ourselves to God, who draws us towards God's self as the one eternal good. Entrusting ourselves to God's goodness, justice, and mercy, we are invited into the new order of things into the kingdom reality as it is coming into being all around us. And in that invitation, I believe we learn to ask different questions. Questions that emerge from humility and compassion, from curiosity and a genuine desire for understanding and relationship. What's your name? What brought you here today? What matters most to you? Not who do you think you are, but who are you? And what is your dream for this world that God holds so dearly? Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the city, the world, and all those in need, responding to each petition with the words, hear our prayer. Holy God, where the church is powerful and privileged, shape it with humility so that your love may be at work in us. Bless our Jewish neighbors as they keep Yom Kippur beginning this night. God of life, hear our prayer. Mighty God, preserve your creation. Mend and redeem places that are polluted or damaged. Help us repent of the ways we have contributed to destruction. God of life, hear our prayer. Righteous God, move nations, particularly this nation. Where legal systems fail, where systemic racism persists, bring change so that cultures and institutions soaked with sin may turn toward life. God of life, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, relieve the suffering of those who are ill, in body, mind, or spirit, particularly Doris, Eduardo, Kit, 
and Jackie. Defend the lives and welfare of children who are abused or neglected, hungry or exploited, bullied or lonely. God of life, hear our prayer. We praise you, O God, for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us, led by their witness and the witness of Mary, Mother of God. Teach us to confess Christ Jesus as Lord in life and in death. God of life, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, as Jesus received the cries of the needy, and grant us your life, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
Let us pray. As grains of wheat scattered on a hill are gathering to become one bread, so let your church be gathered from all the ends of the earth into your kingdom, for yours is the glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and who by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. From age to age your creation sings your praises. You feed the birds of the air. You clove the fields with lilies. You gave your blessing to Abraham and his descendants. And you spoke with Moses, Elisha, and David. You fulfilled your covenant with us in Jesus. He is Emmanuel, your beloved Son, the star that guides us to wisdom, the treasure hidden in a field. He is the landowner who overpays the workers, the judge who separates good from evil. For us he lived, for us he died, and for us he rose to eternal life. Then and now, he invites us to your banquet, as on the night in which he was betrayed, when he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We hear this call, we repent of our ways, and we enter with joy into the kingdom of heaven. Send now your Holy Spirit on your gathered disciples. Make of these gifts of your church the body and blood of forgiveness, Heal us and grant us your righteousness, that we may love you and serve our neighbors. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, our Father in heaven, the rock on which we build, the dove alighting on us all. We worship you and sing your praises, today and to the end of the ages. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace.
Let us pray. God of the welcome table, we give you thanks that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you unite us in the body of Christ. Enter into the hearts of those unable to receive Christ in the sacrament this day. Strengthen us, form us, grant us to live in you and you in us. Sustain us by your grace so that we may share your neighborly love with all through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.